Hi and welcome back to part two of my panoramic painting. In this part I'll be focusing on the beach area which requires quite a bit of dry brushwork and detail to be put in there. Uh, after that I'll be probably going towards the building uh, but whether it will actually be in this part I don't know. I'm planning to do th this as a three part tutorial. If you haven't seen the first part there's a link coming up on the screen now so I humbly suggest that you watch that one first to get continuance through this painting. So without further ado, we'll carry on. OK, we'll make a start. This beach area, at the moment I've got this light red, fairly light wash. A lot of this area does show through from the dry brushwork that I will actually be putting over the top. But there's a line of seaweed all across this beach here. Uh, which is obviously fairly broken. Um, that needs to be a little bit more yellow, the sand there, just underneath the uh, the building there. And there's quite a lot of stonework, uh, which I shall basically do with spatter and other means. Well, the first job is to make a darkish brown, which I've just put some burnt umber into the palette and make that a bit stronger. And I'll probably just put a touch of burnt sienna in that as well, just to redden it up slightly. And then just a tiny touch of ultramarine, just to darken it down a bit. I want this a fairly stiffish mixture, so that when I apply it with dry brush, a lot of the underneath will actually come shining through, I'll just a touch more water in that I think. So, here we go. Just on the shoreline there. It's quite concentrated here so I will run over that with the damp brush in a moment just to spread that out a bit. is just a touch too dry so let's uh, strengthen it that's burnt umber burnt sienna a touch of ultramarine and a touch more water okay it's a bit hit and miss as I say I want a lot of the underneath to actually show through this so just thickening up that shoreline there. So there are quite large gaps in it. I'm using an Asabi brush which is a number three. Um, it's probably about a three eighths three eighths of an inch mop. I do like mops in preference to hakes. I've used hakes in the past but um, I much prefer mop brushes. Find you get a lot more control with them. So let's do a few dots. Just so it breaks up. I'm a bit more concentrated there. Uh, let's just uh, mix a bit more up. A slight change of shade. Make it a touch darker. Okay, right, I should put it. Following the what would basically the wash of the sea coming in on the shore, so I'm sort of doing the strokes as the sea would have deposited this. Uh, it's a bit darker there. That goes all the way off the page there. But you can see the beauty of using rough paper 
the um, texture really breaks up the brushwork which is perfect for this sort of effect. You can see it's sort of really thickening this up now. Right, so I'm going to go to a smaller brush for the moment. I'm going to drop down to a number six sable. Just put a few more specific dots in here just spread that a bit I'd say I want that fairly solid on that that bit there and that just runs out of off the edge there Put a little bit of green in this as well. So if I take some Oriole in, and a touch of ultramarine, I think, just to, just, and a touch. Touch of raw sienna in that as well, just to take the brightness of the yellow off. Okay. Right, and just brush just some of that in along with the other stuff that's there. Just to, so you do get this greenish algae actually in amongst seaweed usually okay don't want to overdo this though but uh, just okay that will probably do me on that bit there And now we need a greyish top coat. So we'll go for ultramarine again. It's going to be fairly lightish. I'll uh, spray that with a touch of burnt sienna. A bit too brown now, so a touch more blue. Right? Okay, just put some of that in as well now. Just light strokes. That sort of comes all the way out of the picture at the front there. Actually, I'm going to change to a bigger brush again. Let's wash this uh, mop out. And get the excess water off it. load it up. Right, okay. That's better. That shale sort of comes down like there's almost a path through it there. And continues over here. You can say I'm still following the curvature of the beach just to give us the effect of the actual panorama panorama of the I'm just going to lighten this section slightly here. Don't 
doing that with my trusty tissue paper. Let's just uh, smooth that one out. Just a light spot of water out of that. This has got to be quite a bit darker here, um, but I need to let it dry now, so we'll come back to it after it's dried. Okay, I've got that dry now, I've just run the hair dryer over it. I'm going to mix up a fairly darkish colour to start with, and I'll be using an old toothbrush, which is you need the brush with fairly stiff bristles so that it will spring when you actually do this action uh, to get the spattering. So we'll mix a bit of ultramarine. I might as well go in this one. Ultramarine. You need this to be th thick enough to actually leave a mark but thin enough to actually come off when you spatter it. It's a bit of trial and error. And you obviously need to be able to get your brush into it as well. So let's just put a spot more water in that. But I need to thicken this up quite a bit now. So that's more ultramarine. And using burnt umber in there as well. I should be spattering with white as well. Let's get most of the paint out of this brush so I've got something to work with. Okay. I'm going to mask off some areas. Obviously don't want spattering in the sea. So let's just put a couple of pieces of paper across just to protect it. And on with the first layer. So light the brush up. And here we go. If you want to focus more in one area, just stay there and sp sp sprinkle with the brush. In a concentrated area. Now I'm working away up that uh, the line there. As soon as your brush starts to run dry, time to top up again. So that's quite quite dense there. And put a little bit actually in the seaweed, and this is quite dark as well. So. Right, I think that will do for the black. Let's just mix up a little bit of white now. Okay, I've got a separate palette out for this. It's not a good idea to use gouache actually in your palette because what actually happens, because it's an, uh, quite a thick opaque paint, it will actually turn your other stuff in the palette milky or chalky. So uh, I know certain people, well Jeff Kersey used, usually uses the edge of the board but I find I usually end up with white gouache all over my hands. So I've just made up a, a separate palette now. Um, I've got a bit of water on this brush. I've just cleaned it. 
so there's no uh, no black still in it. Let's just actually no, I'll, I'll mix it with the with the brush first. Don't want too much water in this, so otherwise it'll just go grey. It won't actually be white. But you want you need enough water in it to basically uh, be able to stipple it. Right, that's about the consistency of single cream now. So hopefully that should be about right. Let's give it a go. So load the uh, stippling brush up and here we go again. It's mainly around this central bit there's sort of white stones actually in the in there. There's a few obviously over here as well. Don't want to overdo this though because uh, you end up overworking it. And just put a few over here as well. But it does give a contrast to the actual black stippling that you put in. Sort of breaks it up a bit. Right, I think that is enough actually. So we'll remove the paper. Okay now that's dry I think the next stage is going to be trees. There's a bunch of um, trees here just overlapping and just here as well. They'll sort of frame the picture so I'll mix up some colours for that. This one may well do. It just needs to be reactivated. I'll put a spot of water in that and uh, strengthen it up a bit. That was um, oil in. And cobalt blue. Alright, mix up a couple of different greens. Let's go with um what's marine don't need a great deal of this because there's only just those two little groups uh, some viridian Sienna. I'm not doing some cadial, I think. And a touch of cobalt, will it not? A bit more yellow, I think. Okay, well, let's put a bit of dark in there initially. I shall dry brush this in as well. Twigs sticking out of it. Okay, going for the middle green. colour green as well. I think we need some more darks in that as well. Let's 
to like this. So. Some more paint actually. Uh, that was ultramarine. Viridian. Turn up viridians, it's going to be dry. So as you might not see it on the video but it's been a few days since I actually painted and uh, my paints have actually dried out slightly. A touch of burnt sienna in that. Quite a bit of burnt sienna I think. Just a, yeah, it's quite a darkish green. Uh, let's just dot some of that in now. Still damp. And we'll do the same over here. It's not quite so dark, so I'll just put a little bit of dark in there. Some of that dark into the light, into the yellow. I'll just put on there. Okay, that's it. And let's try a bit of raw sienna and cobalt. It's a slightly different green. Branches. A bit more dark in there. I'll let those dry off and then I'll scrape some highlights over that. Let's just put a bit of water down the front here, just to blur that into the beach there. I'll do the same on this side. Okay. And so I'll put some streaks of highlighted yellow over that just to uh, finish that off. I don't want to overwork it too much. Let's put the texture in it. Right, um, there's a beach area here that is slightly yellow so I think I'll mix up some raw sienna and over the top of that red that should just basically warm it up and I will mix up a bit of raw sienna raw sienna is a good one to use because it is actually a transparent colour so it should, basically the red underneath should go with the orange. Let's just see how it looks. It might be a little thick, but um, yeah, just needs a bit more water on that. Just 
using water now just to blend that in. Don't forget that uh, colours generally they dry anything up to 30% lighter after you've applied them. Don't want to disturb that too much. But I'll just brush that out a bit. And just blend it into the beach area. Right, when that's dry, I'll, I will put some more texturing over the top of that. Just a touch over this side as well, I think. Just on the path there. A little bit strong. Get some water on that. Just to basically lift it just slightly. And I think we'll put a, st a spot there as well. Just to give the overall contrast. I don't want a definite line though, so I'll brush that out. Okay, that gives us some uh, variation in the beach area now. And while we're at it, I think I'll just... Just plain maple yellow, I think. Yeah, you go with that. It is a lightish beach. And I'm brushing some blue afterwards. So let's just put that in on there. Let's give some lighter areas in here as well. Again, I'm following the contour of the beach with these brush strokes. That's it. Right, I think it's time to dry it off. I've got that dry now. Um, what I'm going to do is put a few twigs in here and then some highlights. I'll be using some lemon yellow and primrose yellow which is nickel titanate yellow if you've got Daniel Smith but uh, they'll actually they're, they're quite opaque and I shall put them on neat so they just picks out highlights actually on the leaves and let's just mix up some dark so I don't need a great deal but I'll use some ultramarine and then sienna keep them slightly on the brown side because they are twigs after all so a bit more burnt sienna in that okay Don't want too much paint on the brush. This is just going to be fine twigs put into the foliage here. Just be fairly rounding with it. Smudge the finger just to blur them out a bit and also on this side. Okay. 
I'm going to use this straight from the tube. Some nickel titanate, well primrose yellow actually, so the SAA colour. So that's squeezing out, so I'll put it in the pallet. Otherwise, I'm going to end up in a right mess. Right. I'll put my brush clip into the wash first. I'm going to pollute the uh, collar. Okay. Alright, so I'll just dot a few bits in here. Some over here. Random dots. A touch of the lemon yellow as well. Just slightly darker, but again, still opaque. Brush off. Dots and darks in and around this as well. Okay, Got some darks just to too much paint. Same over here. Just by way of a bit of contrast to put some burnt sienna. Just dry brush that in. Again, using it neat. Right, that will do for that. 
now some texture on this bit of sand before I tackle this building. Okay, I mixed up um, some ultramarine and burnt umber, tending more towards the blue side. It's still slightly brown, but uh, that's basically to speckle this, right? I, I need to mask off the building once again. So a couple of sheets, spare uh, sheets, and I will actually protect that bit as well. So I'm just interested in stippling this bit here. So my trusty stippling brush. Load it up. And here we go. Put a patch just up towards the building there. rocks that's probably enough and rinse that off I want to put a little bit of white over the top of that as well I've still got the white separated into another palette just need enough water in there just to get it flowing don't want too much Otherwise it will not show up. It might be a little thin, but uh, we'll see how we go. Get the excess off the paper. Okay, so that's enough. Okay. And just one or two darkish streaks in there. Of, look, again it looks like seaweed so I'll just use a rigger brush and just dry brush get most of the paint off and uh, just okay I'm going to dry those uh, spots off first Right, okay, there's some darker spots. I can't quite make out what they are, but uh, I'm just going to pop those in with a thicker brush and just on the shoreline there, just jutting into the water. So I to thicken that up a bit. Just use an ultramarine and burnt umber again. So much ultramarine now. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they are, but you see just a shape just paint a shape okay just want to in there now uh, that um sand just does creep around the front of that building there so if I just put a bit of Naples Juno and raw sienna together a bit more Naples Juno in that okay just into the water there it's probably a little on the strong side but into the waters area okay. Let's 
the impression that there's sand under the water there. Right. So I just need a little bit of uh, blue now, just to paint under the building there. So I'm going to use some touch of ultramarine and a touch of viridian in that. So I'll just pop that under the building there. You can just see it. Put it under the eaves there. And just blend it into the beach area. Right, I just need to dry that now. I'm just going to brush in a touch of this blue just on the beach area here, just as dry brush. And blend it in. Once again, when that's dry, I'll just rub over some uh, dry brush on that, just as a, there is some distance seaweed actually on that beach as well. Right, I need some darks underneath this building now. So using my number four, put in some dark. All these little pillars are dark under here. And the support for this little jetty. But they're obviously underneath the building. Just to find the brush to just square them up a bit. I've got just a dark shadow. Just weaken that a little bit. And shadow a tree underneath. Just 
to feather that into the beach. So it's not the definite hard line. Two more just in the back of that as well. There's another one there, not too much paint on the brush. And another one just there. Get rid of that. So if you're quick enough, you can actually get round your mistakes. Right, okay. That's for that. A little jetty comes down the front of that. Which I'll paint in with the white. Okay, well I think we'll call that the end of part two. Uh, basically, there's just a few bits left to do now. There's more work needed on this beach here. Obviously this group of buildings and uh, items has got to be painted in. And there's boats on the water. And I'll, I'll pull a few highlights actually in the sea as well, uh, just to strengthen that up. So I hope you've enjoyed this part and I'll see you in part three. Thanks for watching.